Hello everyone, this is Tech Sergeant Kino and we're about to recap what you learned in class regarding the scroll metering injection pump. As you see right now, this is our injection pump housing which houses our injection pumps lubricated by our diesel fuel. Inside our injection pump housing, we see our fuel rack which will be connected to our injection pumps. Injection pumps will consist of our spring our plungers with a helix cut groove that will be actuated or moved upward by the cam lobe and lifter actions. Our plunger is mated to the barrel which contains the spill port and the bypass port. Our bonnet is mounted on top of the barrel which contains our reverse flow check valve and spring. The spring keeps the reverse flow check valve closed below 100 psi. Our bonnet is either internal or external with treads for the fuel line nuts. The reverse flow check valve keeps the line full of fuel. Our camshaft will be actuating our injection pumps and rotating at half engine speed. Here you see our throttle linkage connected to our fuel rack. And also connected to the fuel rack is our governor linkage. In this system, depending on the manufacturer or the engine, our governor would either be mechanical, which contains flyweights, linkage, and springs, or it could be a combination of different designs, such as your hydromechanical servo type, or it could be a pneumatic. Here you will see our hand primer pump which removes air from the system and contains two one-way check valve. Normally it's mounted on the siphon brake disc which prevents fuel from siphoning back to the tank. And on this style you can see the hand primer pump mounted to the transfer pump. This is our mount for the injection pump housing which is also used to set or adjust our timing. Normally our transfer pump is mounted to the front in the gear style which provides 35 psi of fuel to the housing which is also maintained by the constant bleed valve which opens to 25 to 32 psi. Right now you can see the uh, camshaft actuating our injection pump in firing order. Our stroke begin when the plunger is at the bottom of the stroke. At the bottom of the stroke, fuel rushes in above the plunger. As the plunger moves up, our plunger covers the spill port, creating pressure and pressure is relieved once the helix cut passes through the spill port. Here we have our fuel rack metering our fuel. Basically, it's rotating our plungers, which is changing the position of our helix, changing our effective stroke. Our effective stroke determines the amount of fuel being metered. So it could be either a long effective stroke or short effective stroke. So let's look at the internal of our injection pumps. Right now you see our barrel and plunger and a blow up picture of our helix cut that when we rotate our plunger the helix becomes longer so at the bottom of the stroke again fuel enters the spill port filling above the plunger and as the plunger moves up we create pressure injection begins when the spill port in the bypass port is blocked or covered Unseating our reverse flow check valve at 100 psi, sending fuel to the lines and the nozzle. And then injection ends when the spill port is uncovered as the pressure is relieved. 